Okay, so in this devlog, I'm going to show off some stuff that is all still very much in progress. Um, but I have the beginnings of a space station that has a tree with some leaves, some other greenery that has been kind of put up. Kind of looks like streamers, but they're not. They're more leaves, which as you can see, if we go up here, more leaves. Um, and yeah, and all of this is sort of tied together with uh, a new character controller, which I can't claim too much credit for because it, it was a free asset. Um, but I have modified it, which is what allows me to have some third person action, which I have been playing around with the idea of for being able to switch between third person and first person. Um, but uh, the other thing is uh, trying to make use of uh, gravity and changing the direction of gravity. So as we go through here, whoop, we come around to the underside of the space station, which is where, in theory, I want to have it that you land these small spaceships. So whoop, there we go. You can see there's still the, the sun, the star. And uh, we zoom out, get a better idea of you know, kind of at the underside of the space station now. So, yeah. Um, all of this is really to say that uh, it's all work in progress. <laughs> um, I originally wanted this to be like a bigger space station, but um, I wasn't really liking the size of this. It took a long time to figure out like where are things going to land and how is that all going to work. So I've decided to sort of downgrade this space station to be something that's a little bit more like a small research station or something a bit more you know like maybe there'll only be like two to four people here with a few things you can find um I'll show you what it looks like it's going through in third person it's pretty smooth yeah um there we go and now you're here um, so yeah, I've actually already started prototyping out like a much larger space station that's actually supposed to be like, there's a lot of different things. Um, and I was thinking for this one, the underside could be for smaller parts. One of these wings over here for, could be for docking the larger ships. And then the other wing could be for like, I don't know, where the researchy stuff happens. And then this is more just like a common area. Um, you know, it's something in between like very fancy rich person place um, and also just like just in general a nice ish place um, anyway the other side is just the same but I changed the colors just so I know which side is which um, but yeah so I'll, I'll probably switch over to show you how I did the trees which I don't know if I will continue doing the trees because these are actually a particle effect and as much as it's nice to use those particles should be GPU instanced, but Unity doesn't like that. So, which is a shame. They keep flickering in and out when they're GPU instanced, and when they aren't GPU instanced, they definitely use more uh, processing time. And they get a noticeably lower frame rate, down from like 180 down to 120. Um, which, you know, 120 is still good, but I don't have much else going on, so, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm showing you sort of going sideways. Um, and all of these here, even though they are just ramps, um, these are controlled by the mesh itself. Um, so there's a sort of a little bit of a jolt as it sort of tries to figure out where you are and where you're going. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, I'll show you a little bit more about how I made this um, bit behind the scenes. So here in the Unity editor, I've got the scene world, the U-shape viewed from the outside. Um, the player should be where the camera is, in there. Um, and yeah, so actually the way the gravity works is right now where we are here, it's just a direction. It's just as long as you're within this mesh up here, gravity is down or in a certain direction. Uh, but once we get close enough here, you can see it pops in and starts drawing uh, some gizmos. 
Um, so we've got it where all the, the red points are actually different, the nearest vertices. There's the five nearest vertices to where the player is. Um, with the blue lines, or the teal lines being the direct, the normals of those vertices, and then the amount that they are contributing to an average. Uh, with the purple line being the direction of gravity, which is why it's pointing down and through, uh, through the bottom. Uh, with the green point also being like where the player is. Um, so you can see there's a bit of a gap. There's the larger squares here and then more densely packed squares here. Um, and as we go around, you can see it calculates all of that. And then there's larger, more distance here where they're all flat. But like you can see it starts to tilt here a bit early because the vertex uh, density is a bit low. So really I need some extra vertices closer to the lip so you don't start tilting too soon. Um, which might actually be desirable to sort of tilt you ahead of time. Um, but uh, anyway, um, that's why you're sort of tilting here a bit soon. But in motion, it kind of actually works out to have you tilt a little bit sooner. So who knows, maybe I'll leave it. Um, but yeah, internally, that's all done using what's called a KD tree, which is basically spatial partitioning. So I pre-calculate where all the normals are and where they are in space. Um, and then it's a very efficient lookup to be, I'm here, get me the five nearest points. Um, and it figures out what the, uh, what the normals, five normals are. And then I calculate them based on distance to that point. So if they're really far away, if there aren't many of them, they won't contribute much and all of that. Plus it is a separate mesh. You can see, like I have collision over here, um, but like it's only this bottom part here, this mesh that we care about for gravity, you know. Um, and you can do a thing where you do a jump and sort of hit your head uh, the whole way as you're going out. Um, and yeah, everything still technically works. I can jump and then sort of stop, kind of stop. Don't have a lot, too much air control, but yeah. Um, and then we should, if we can find it, be able to go over here and, uh, nope, that's the wrong one. You can see over here, maybe, there we go. You can see. This one here also has vertices as well, that's for handling that ramp. So in theory, I can actually do quite complex shapes. You know, I could do like S curves and all sorts of things that should make it work um, just as well. Um, as you can see, I'm not using any of that stuff for these big flat surfaces. I'm just using a direction, um, which is why there's no green points showing up here. Um, but yeah, basically KD trees. They work quite well. So here in Blender, I've got the tree mesh that is all, again a paid asset that I have modified. I could not make this myself, um, which I basically decimated a bit, simplified it. It was a bit more high poly than I needed and applied my uh, shader material on top. Um, and then I just pulled out the tips of the branches um, and put them as a separate mesh and then use that in Unity's particle emission shape. Um, and then down here I've got a tree leaf, which is uh, not amazing looking by any means, but it's very simple. It's got a darker color in the bottom and lighter color on top. Um, and then I have a lower quality version, same colors, top and bottom kind of overlap, shape changes a bit, but that's LEDs. Um, and then across in Unity, here under emission, no, shape, under shape, I have it where I've set it to a mesh with this tree leaves part. And if I restart that, I get some leaves. Um, and then set the lifetime to something really high. Gave it some start rotation shenanigans. Uh, I've got it where in theory it should just emit all of them immediately. Um, gave it a little bit of noise just for the rotation so that there's some subtle movement. Um, and yeah, just basically, I created a little script to switch between LODs for when you get far away. Um, and really it just took a bit of playing around trying to get the uh, um, yeah, get everything working as it should. Try it out this, I found this thing about changing the sort in layer, which apparently can help with things flickering in and out. 
see if I can show you what that looks like when I turn all of these back onto GPU instance. Let's see if I can if it'll do it now or not. Yeah. Now it's not doing it, of course. I noticed it more in the build, but basically you'll just have it where whole leaves, or not all the leaves, would just flicker in and out. Sometimes the shadows would remain. It's a it's a very weird effect, and as far as I can tell, it's a bug. Um, of course, when I'm recording, it doesn't do it. So, it does not more in build mode, so I just had to rebuild it with GPU instancing enabled again. And it seems to almost be like dependent on the angle, um, but I've had it where sometimes, even when I'm not moving the camera, they'll just flicker in and out with GPU instancing. Um, that one's gone over there. Seems to almost be when you're looking at it, but not quite. It's very odd, and I really wish I knew what was causing it, because I would love to have GPU instancing be on by default. Um, I've seen that different bug reports across Unity over the years, across many different versions going back a long time, where they say, yeah, it's a problem, and then they fix it. I don't know. I don't know if it's just means it's not worth trying to use it really long term for GPU mesh instances um, with the particle system. I just need to use a different system entirely just to avoid it. But uh, yeah, it seemed like a good idea. It was very easy to set up otherwise. Um, anyway, overall, uh, this is hopefully the next direction I'm going and I'll have a bigger space station to show off with some more things that's less prototypey um, in future. But uh, yeah, this is where we're at with uh, leaves that like to flicker in and out. There we go. Leaves, space station. All right, see ya.